What's up, folks? Rob Anderson, Clean Power Wash, Salisbury, Maryland, and hey. Oh, look who it is. It's Seth. Seth, Seth Thomas. He's hanging out with us, and he's so much bigger than the other videos. All right, go. Get your nerf gun. I don't know what you did with your bullet. All right, so guys, what I want to talk to you real quick about today is about water tanks. Uh, buffer tank, water tank, whatever you want to call it. Um, on your trailers, your trucks, your rigs, or whatever. And sorry, the sun's getting in my eyes a little bit. Um, you know, what, what's the ideal size for your tank? Um, a couple things to keep in mind here is um, what what are you running off of it? You know, if all you're doing is running a two or three gallon a minute machine or your overall draw rate's only five or six gallons a minute, it's really not gonna matter. You're gonna be able to bring enough water into your buffer tank to feed your machine and keep it going. If you're running multiple machines though, then you're gonna need to have a buffer tank and the more machines and the bigger draw you have, the more machines you're gonna need. Dual feeding a tank can help, but ultimately if you're gonna run two eight gallon a minute machines, you're not gonna run them off of a 55 or 100 gallon machine or 100 gallon tank because it's gonna, you're gonna end up running out of water. You're gonna draw down water so much faster that it can really refill. And also for those times when you're not spraying the gun or not doing the flat work, you only fill up only so high. Uh, so I did a real quick survey just to make sure this wasn't just my opinions on this uh, over in Spray Wash Academy. Had 130 people respond, two said 55. Uh, I had 12 people that said they use a 100, 150 gallon tank, uh, which is a good starter tank too. Uh, 200 there were six people for 275 totes I'm assuming most of them are gonna be the totes uh, is 48 uh, for 325 we had 14 people 500 gallons plus size tanks that was 45 and then uh, two guys wanted to point out that uh, they use thousand gallon tanks in the Eric Trice because he's a baller with his fleet wash he's got a 1500 gallon tank that thing is enormous absolutely freaking enormous so Overall, the people that were using 200 gallons or larger was 116 out of 130. Basically 90% of the people in spray wash. And I would say that that's gonna be a pretty decent sampling of contractors in different areas. Um, now you wanna make sure, obviously, whichever tank you're using, that your vehicle, your truck, your trailer, uh, whatever you're moving this tank with, um, and all the other equipment on it, that that's below the weight rating of your equipment. You know, you don't want to put a 500 gallon tank on a trailer that's only rated for 3,000 pounds. That tank plus even half a tank of water is going to break your trailer. Obviously, if it's a 3,000 pound axle, it really and truly can't handle more than that, but you don't want to exceed the manufacturer's ratings on that. Um, on all of our trucks, currently we have a 500 gallon tank on this one over here, which we call Dragon Boxer. We've got our 500 gallon tank. We're doing currently currently redoing this one uh, you can see we put a little bit of um, herculiner on that floor just to hopefully extend the life of inside there we've got a big old reels there we'll be making some more videos as we finish this up um, over here we've got our 500 gallon one we're going to be building out this trailer rig again this year so you'll see some videos on that and then we have our air skid that air skid and this is the reason why i want to make this video that air skid has a 100 gallon water tank and a 100 gallon bleach tank um, it's designed to apply soap. Now, if it's just you washing, the amount of gallons that you have in your tank isn't going to matter quite as much. Let's, uh, sorry, let me fix that tripod. There we go. It, it's not going to matter as much. Now, when you start running multiple people, multiple um, machines at the same time, obviously you have to look at your draw rates. If it's just you, you're using a four gallon a minute machine and you got a 50 or 100, 150 gallon tank, whatever it may be, you're going to be able to run that basically all day long. The reason why we run big tanks and why we start off every single day with them full, we literally will take all these trucks, they get hooked up to a water spigot at the end of the night uh, or at the end of the day, and then in the morning they just disconnect it. They've got Hudson float valves. So we start every day with 520, 530 gallons in there. That's also something important to realize with these tanks. When you have a Hudson float valve, that is going to take out about four inches, five inches of the volume of your tank. Uh, so whether that's on one of these ones, it's about 20, 25 gallons. If it's in a 55 over here, that's probably going to knock out about 10 to 15 gallons. Um, so that's going to impact how much water you can have in there overall. But the idea with a buffer, again, when you're not spraying, the water is going back into your tank. So it keeps your pump cool, but also allows that tank to continue to fill up. So especially if you're using a house, it's, let's just say it's the water flow out of the spigots five gallons a minute. 
And this is something where you have to know your area. If you're in a rural area and everybody's spigots are coming out at three or four gallons a minute, you're probably gonna to wanna to start the day off with a lot of water. You're gonna to wanna to figure out ways that you can get more water. And that's also, it, no matter what size thing you're using, water is the first and the last thing that we disconnect and hook up at, at any given job. We want water, we basically pull the hose with us when we walk up to ring the doorbell and say, hi, Miss Johnson, we're here. Let's go ahead and hook the water up. Let's walk around um, so that way it's filling up. If it's something where it's gonna, we're gonna be there for a little while, we'll hook up two hoses. Um, and all of our rigs are set so that we can dual feed the tank, um, which just means that we're pulling from multiple spots and you will get more flow than just having one spigot, one hose connected. Um, <clears throat> so I wanna talk to you about this 100 gallon tank over here. This is our original pressure washing truck. The skid is not the original skid or not the original equipment that was on there. We always had our uh, six by 10 trailer, which was a smaller trailer. We could only put the 275 tote on it. Uh, this one's got the 100 gallon. We've got a uh, airbag kit underneath here to level this out as well. Um, and right now it's just sitting. We're, we're currently in the process of selling this skid, uh, but it does help you understand the situation. We were running an eight gallon a minute machine. We put it right up here, put a pressure reel, and we would literally, the guys would have to wait for water all the time all the time so the air skid on here is capable of about <clears throat> between six to eight gallons per minute applying chems um, most times you're not going to be spraying full bore for the whole time you know you spray your side stop look whatever eight gallon a minute pressure washer same thing and when you start on a job anytime you always want to start on the house or the building and then save the flat work for last unless the flat works like 60, 70, 80% of the overall job, and then you just gotta put somebody all in there to begin with. But that 100 gallon tank, even dual feeding it, even having one where the hose literally just went to, see that little gray hose, that back there gray green hose? We had that hooked up, and so that's putting water directly through there. It's not going through a manifold, it's not going through all those other things, but we were constantly waiting on water. And we have decent water flow out here. It's not that people's houses are putting out eight to 10 gallons a minute, which would be fantastic. Um, but we literally could not make it work by having a pressure washer and the, the air diaphragm system, um, sorry, the yeah, air diaphragm system run off that 100 gallon tank. It was awful. We had guys that basically I was paying them at least an hour, hour and a half every day that they weren't working because they were waiting on water. Even if we started the day with 100 gallons, it takes next to no time. For that eight gallon a minute machine, I mean, that's 10 minutes. 10 minutes of runtime. Because again, what we're saying is that on here, from about here up will never get filled because you've got a Hudson float valve in there. So you can't overfill that. You can't get more time out of it. And so if you're also, if you're running two machines were combined where we've got, let's just say, let's say it's five gallons a minute for the air compressor and eight gallons a minute. So you're drawing 13 gallons a minute, but you're only filling at five or six. So that's going to give you about 15 minutes of runtime before you're out of water. And as fast as everybody says they're all, you know, washing houses and stuff, 15 minutes and washing, get a, get a good bit amount of stuff done. Uh, but it was also not worth the risk for us because if all of a sudden we're out of water, well, we got to stop soaping. We got to kind of keep the pressure washer going, but you can cavitate the pump without water in it. And now you've got soap on the side of a house that you got to get rinsed off before you cause issues. So, you know, with us running multiple machines, and as you get there, you're definitely going to want a bigger tank. Uh, I'll show you two other tanks here. All right, so this is our stack of extra tanks and other miscellaneous things. And as a power washer, you know you probably got a pile, something like that. This is a 55-gallon. This one's a water dragon tank I got from the power wash store. Um, if you're going to go with a 55-gallon container for your buffer, you want something that's got a nice square or right angles on these. So that way you can actually plumb it better. Um, this one our plan was to use and still is to use it as a bleach tank just a 55 instead of a 100 gallon one um, and then this is a <clears throat> pretty sure the the brand or manufacturer was romo tank i got this on amazon it's crazy it was actually like 75 dollars cheaper to buy this on amazon which was sold by northern tool than it was to buy it from northern tool but this this tank is actually a good good size tank guys if you're gonna if you really want to run a 100 gallon tank it's smaller, you can see, than the 275 tote right here. Not a whole lot smaller, but certainly from a vertical standpoint, it's smaller. Um, you can put straps on it. 
which definitely make sure that whatever tank you've got is strapped down one way or another. DOT will fry your butt if you don't take care of that. Um, but it's already got the um, goodness, the plug over here. Um, bulkhead, there we go, bulkhead. Uh, right here to, to be able to plumb everything on it. It is a smaller outlet too. That's something if you watch some of the other videos that I've made, the 275 tote has a two inch bulkhead, which is gonna allow more flow than this one, one and a half inch, whatever that is. I think it's actually one. Um, but that'll do sufficiently well, good enough flow with this tank to be able to prime and power an eight gallon a minute machine. And then if you're using your 12 volt and it's just pulling some water out of there, or you got a mixed tank, these also work pretty well for mixed tanks, but you'd want to find one that does not have a hole in the bottom. Anytime you're dealing with bleach in it, you want to be sucking it out of the top. So again, that, that's my two cents on tanks. Um, and yes, I've got a big mess behind my shop. Um, so don't, don't short yourself and get a small buffer tank. You want to make sure that you've got the appropriate size tank to keep you moving. And again, if your rig can't handle it, don't overdo it. It's not worth it. Have a great day. See ya.